Hello, everyone. I'm going to give it a minute for a couple of people to join us. I want to show you guys some of the cards we made. Let me change my chat. I know this is kind of impromptu. We did not schedule this today. What is that? Something on the camera there. Oops. Oh, there we go. Do, do, do. Oh. One thing I hate about tablets, you got to be pretty quick. Okay, it's Saturday night. It's 10 o'clock. I know it's getting late, but you guys, I've been watching the R. Kelly document documentary like a lot of people have been. And, you know, I mean, I was a teenager when this was going on, so I really didn't pay any attention to it. So for me to watch this and as a mother, it's it's uh, it's kind of shocking. So, you know, we'll we'll see what unfolds here. But I don't know. There's a lot of people that have the same story again. So we'll just wait and see. All right. So I wanted to share a couple things with you. Um, again, it is celebration time with Stampin' Up! And I got this nice award, which is kind of funny to me because <laughs> my top client is myself um, and two of my friends that are my stamping friends. So thank you, Ruthann. And thank you, Kim, for being my, my enablers. And yes, I want to thank the couple of you that have also ordered items from my um, Stampin' Up! website. I do appreciate you guys supporting me. But I just think it's funny because I'm in no way like selling out of this Stampin' Up! stuff. So to see, you know, this coming through is quite funny. Um... Um, but you know, I'm honored. I'll take it. Cool. Um, I'll have the Stampin' Up! catalog to show for you guys in a little bit. Um, I did just order some stuff, so it'll be a few, few days before that comes in and I show it to you. I also wanted to show you a couple of things I picked up on haul. Well, orders. So a lot of you have been asking me for hot foiling, where to get these hot foil dies and foils. So I just ordered some. Now, of course, you know, you can go over to HSN. And I think if you're in Europe, you can get some stuff from, I think it's called Create and Craft. And also, is it called Hachanda, which is something creative arts kind of channel which is like HSN, QVC here for us in the States. I'm sorry, I'm not much help for you Canadians. Um, I know that a lot of these products are either US or UK based, but I ordered from Scrapbooking Made Simple. And they have a lot of hot foil that they use with the uh, Go Press, the Couture Creations Go Press machine, which uh, a few years back Anna Griffin had a deal with them. So this is a hot foil die that says Heartfelt Sympathy. If you guys have seen my previous hot foil videos, that was with the like the Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. They're all the same. So these are hot foil stamp dies. And what these do is they stamp out through hot foil this design, but they don't actually cut anything out. Where a regular die cuts out the design. And then I got this little um, seahorse. I honestly thought this was going to be bigger, but it's still super cute. But a lot of detail in there. So I'll play around with these and see how these come out. And then as far as foils, I got this like purpley color one. This is called, I don't know, pink purple foil, mirror finish. And then this one is called chocolate copper foil, iridescent finish. So again, these are from Scrapbooking Made Simple. So I got those. Um, stopped at Michael's on my way home. I had a gift card from my lovely sister for Christmas. And I thought, well, let me poke around and let me tell you guys, I was over there, I don't know, a couple days ago and I bought nothing. There wasn't anything that I saw was worth spending my money on, but they had some stuff on sale. So I just want to show you guys real quick. So Leah has been using my markers. So I got her her own set of markers. Guys, these are uh, I don't know why they call them triangle markers. I guess that's the tips on them. But they, they're mixed media markers. There's a variety of colors here. I think there are how many colors? 
36 colors right there in front of my face and five bucks for these markers. So Leah, I got you some new markers. Here you go. Happy birthday. I got um, this sponge cleaner. And although it says makeup sponge cleaner, I'll tell you guys why I got it. Let me get it open here. I see you guys coming in. Say hi. I know it's kind of late. So this is just like a little, a little bowl and it sticks and it has these little ridges in there that you can use to clean out your brushes. And I got it because I picked these up at five below and these are those little blender brushes. Now these are makeup brushes. Hi, Janie. These are little makeup brushes. I picked them up at five below and I know they're selling for very expensive through some other stamping companies. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't have the other ones, so I can't tell you the quality, but as people were saying that their bristles fall out, I these seem to be in there pretty good. Like I haven't had any issues and I bought a big one and a small one for five bucks each to try out. And so far I've been playing around with them. They're pretty neat, but I got this so I can take this up to the kitchen sink, put some soap and water in there and clean the ink out of them, right? Makeup brushes, makeup, makeup cleaners. So I wanted to show you guys that. Um, we're going to make this, this card real quick. So I got some ink I want to try out. I'll go back into that a little more. I got some fixative spray, or sorry, not fixative spray, clear gloss spray. It's a tiny little bottle, which I thought this is great for my craft room. So when I'm making cards and I just want to put a quick coat on there, so some quick spray, always do that outside or in your garage. But here's what was really cool. Look at this little tote. I know my camera's not focusing it. This is called an artist tote bag. It's from Artist Loft. And it has these little pockets on the outside, pocket on each side, and then inside it opens up and you have this little hard cardboard thing, whatever. You put that in the bottom, but it has pockets all around the outside. And I thought, this is a cute little bag. And the best part was $5 for this cute little bag. I'm going to put all my markers in here all my coloring tools so that when I do want to color, you know, I can just print out some images, put my markers and color pencils in here and away I go. So I thought for five bucks, that's a value. In fact, the cashier was even like five bucks for that bag. Where'd you find it? She didn't even know. So it's an artist loft, artist loft bag. Got it, Michaels, five bucks. All right. Um, I wanted to show you guys too, before I show you the, the uh, Valentine's cards. So I had mentioned the other day that I ordered my first set of stamp skates stamps and I have been binge watching their YouTube um, tutorial videos because they're they're simply gorgeous these are gorgeous stamps um, design by Ken I think it's a Japanese name let me find it I don't want to say it incorrectly Well, I'll link the channel, but it's Stampscapes, and um, he does these beautiful cards, okay? And I ordered this, I'm not even kidding you guys, maybe two days ago. It came from California, and it came beautifully packaged with all of these informations on the stamps. And you want to talk about great images and um, inspiration inspiration for somebody who clearly enjoys not only just stamping but you know the art the artist part of it I mean this is a true artist um and to share that with the rest of us I'm just like and I got all of this just for buying one set of stamps these are like little postcards that um he's put the names of his videos and the directions and the stamps and how to make these beautiful scenes. I am just awe inspired right now. Like, this is awesome. I I feel like looking at these like I'm in a like a, a fairy tale of beautiful stamped images. So thank you, Ken. Your stamps are beautiful. Your art is amazing. I am I am truly inspired. And I mean, this is just 
gorgeous. I want to frame this. I want to I want to frame it. Look at this large one. And they're beautifully colored. And so here's the stamp set. You can order them mounted or non-mounted. I ordered them now non-mounted and I'll show you why. Um, and again, this is the stamp set I ordered. So these are more examples of how to use the stamps. And here they are. They're non-mounted rubber. They're deeply etched. You can see every single design in there. And this one has, um, it has this beautiful tree. It has like these pine trees. Here's like some water. This is the clouds image. And then this is the tree with the lake, which is the one I really wanted. And you just cut these out and you stick them on your own easy mount cling foam and you make your own cling mount stamp. So it's a little bit less expensive if you have this easy mount cling foam. If you don't have easy mount cling foam, you might want to buy the ones that are already cut out and mounted for you. So I just wanted to give them a shout out because I think these stamps are beautiful and their images are just stunning. So I want to show you guys that. I uh, wanted to also show you the, oh, um, cards. I put some of these together. I realized I made all these cool acetate card ideas and didn't put any of the cards together. So I wanted to show you some of the cards I put together here. So have a little die cut that says love. This was that inky paper that I kind of um, did the smooshing, you know, with the acetate. Remember it was this. And I just cut some hearts out of it and put the word love on there. Now this top piece is the acetate that was the multiple hearts. I took some red gilding wax and put that over it and then layered it over some red and white polka dotted paper, tied a ribbon at the top and made this a top opening card. Um, this one was that one I tried to do the acetate on. So I also turned it into a top opening card. So there's that little heat emboss with the Brutus Monroe conversation heart embossing color of the month. And then this is just some stamping up paper on the acetate. So glued that in and then put that on a top folding card. Um, this one is the red foiled hearts that I printed off my laser printer and ran through the mink with the creative vision stamps foil. And again, just layered up that love. And I put a little wink of Stella on there and cut out a little heart. Also top folding. Can you guys see that? Janie says, wow, those stampscapes are beautiful. Cannot wait to see what you do with it. Me too. Um, for the set that I got, Janie, the stamps, Kate stamps, <laughs> Stampscape stamps. This set was $18 for the whole page. So, I mean, you're getting one, two, three, four, five stamps out of it for $18. So, if you look at it that way, it's really not expensive for the quality that you're getting. Okay, this one I took that same hearts embossing folder and ran it through the ran the card through there. So, can you see that? Can you see the hearts? And I ran another piece of that uh acetate that I went through the toner and this one I used some deco foil purple I think it's amethyst watercolor on there so here you can see it's more purple you guys see that there you go and then I just put some sequins on there so very simple but cute and then this one is just using some leftover pieces I didn't use any acetate on here but I just put some pattern paper down and then that love and that heart so on the way with making these cards, cards as I promised for you guys. Um, but today, the reason why you guys are here is because I made this beautiful card yesterday. However, I gave it away already. Um, so we're going to make it together. So we're going to start with some glossy cardstock. And... We are using this stamp from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps, and this is called the Silhouette Stag. It is a red rubber cling mounted stamp, and again, they come on this, this backing, which makes it very easy to store. Um, and I have it mounted on my mini Misty towards the bottom of the page, and we are going to get to this in just a moment. First thing we need to do is make our background. So I'm going to move the stamp out of the way just for a few moments. 
And this is glossy paper that I got from the paper cut. This is not the same as photo paper. Do not confuse it with photo paper. It is not the same as photo paper. So you can see here I paid $5.80, who knows how long ago, at a stamp show. The paper cut, glossy, 50 postcards, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is cut this down because that's a full card size. And I feel like when I make this image, um, I want this cut down just a little shorter. So I'm going to cut it down to five and a quarter by four. Because if you are doing the kind of inking that we're going to be doing, you want all of your edges to match. And if you cut it down after you ink it, there will be a white line where you cut it. So I'll cut that down before I ink it. Personal preference, what you want to do there. If you want it to be full card front size, then you can have a full card front size. But, you know, the idea is when we mount it to a card that um, it's not, it's going to have a little bit of a mat or a border on there. Okay. Janie, you're going to have to tell me, see my light up here. Is that distracting? I'm going to turn it off a second. Which is better with the light or without the light? I do have a, la a light on each side of me too, but that overhead light is, is much brighter for sure. Without it. Okay. So I'll leave it off. All right. So this card was very, very, this image was very heavily inspired by Stampscapes. Again, um, Ken does beautiful videos. His videos are very similar to mine in that he this talks his, his way through them. He doesn't do any editing and he's unapologetic about it and says, listen, I'm, you know, my videos are going to be an hour long, but I'm going to show you every step of the way. And he does it as a true artist. He's not selling you anything. He's just showing you the art that he makes. So I took a lot of his hints and teachings and said, all right, I'm going to try that. And I am not the artist he is, but I really had fun making this card. So I hope you'll come along with me on this journey. So one of the things that he uses are these color box sticks. I already had these in my stash. I did not go out and buy them. And when I originally bought them, if any of you guys are familiar with them, you might already have these in your stash. They came for these little color box, little mini inks. So some of you guys might have these little, I guess they're called cat size inks. And what happens is you can take these little stylus or uh, tool sticks, whatever you want to call them. Let me show you. And they have various tips you can put on here. And this is why I had originally bought these many, many moons ago and never used them. I don't know why. But anyway, there's a tip you can put on there and it actually holds on to the ink pad. So then you can take the ink pad and ink while holding the stylus. It makes it easy if you don't want to hold these tiny little ink pads. So then they also had these other attachments. So this is a little black foam. And what you can do is you can actually heat this black foam with your heat gun and kind of put an impression on there. And then you'll have like this mini little stamp, like a, a foam foamy stamp. Okay. So I have those. And then these other ones, these are the ones that Ken uses. These are little white foam um, applicators. And that's what I have on here now. And what these white foam applicators do is very much like a Tim Holtz um, blending tool. But I think these are much smaller and easier to hold on to with the long handle. But again, I had these in my stash. Didn't use them. Literally have been sitting in a drawer not used. So I started watching some of Ken's videos and I'm like, I have those. Let me try using them. So I thought of this like Northern lights kind of image. So I have four colors of distress inks here. Now the dye based inks work best on this technique. So hold on, let me get a drink here. Sorry, excuse me. Um, and that's because on this glossy paper, it's forgiving and it's not. So what it does is because it's glossy, the ink glides right over the top. And you guys will see that. If you make a mistake, you have a really quick time that you can kind of wipe that because it's smooth. It's glossy. 
Once the ink goes into the paper and saturates into the actual paper core underneath, and you can see this is regular paper core underneath, then that ink is locked into place. So you can keep building and adding ink and adding depth of color. So I want to show you, I have these four colors, Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, Lucky Clover, and Chipped Sapphire. And these are all regular distressings. We're not using the um, distress oxides. We're not using the, the pigment-based inks. So... I think uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do one the way I've been doing it, and then I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. But so I have these four tips. There's one on each end, and then and on the other end. So I have four, two styluses, four tips, four colors of ink, and I'm going to start with the lightest color of ink, which is the Twisted Citron. I'm just gonna slide these out away. And feel free to stop and ask me questions. And I will link Ken's page, Stampscapes uh, YouTube channel at the end of this so you guys can can go over there and watch some of his videos they're they're very soothing to me and all you do is you ink up your little sponge okay and because the lightest color is going to be my northern light sky i'm just going to smear it all over the paper all i'm really doing here at this point is kind of conditioning this glossy paper to start accepting ink it's very much like when you're doing copic coloring you know, you lay down like this base layer of color so that all the colors kind of blend together nicely. That's that's all we're doing here. And I know this is a super light green and it's hard to see, but just believe me, I laid down that as my base coat all over. Okay. And then I'm going to move on the other end of my stylus and I'm going to go to mo mode lawn, which is the next green color. And because I'm going to be stamping this image here, I'm really focusing on the, the corners and the sky, not so much the bottom, just the top part of the sky. And I want it to kind of have that northern lights look. Alaska's on my bucket list. I've never been. But I want to start with the corners. And I'm going to kind of give it, um, well, you'll see like this triangular shape. So I'm starting in the corners and just pulling that color down. Now, here's what I meant where this is forgiving. So... Nothing is, the ink is there, but it's like, if, if it's, if I don't like it, I can kind of move it still. Like there's still time to kind of move it out of the way. So it gives you some time there. Once this ink starts to saturate in the paper, then it's, it's there. You can't, you can't take ink out. So you want to start with your lightest colors and build and build and build your darkest colors. But I kind of want like this you'll see like I'm doing like these triangular shapes and I'm kind of doing these squiggly motions because the Northern lights are not, they're not um, straight up and down, right? They're very organic looking. So I'm just kind of making these like upside down trees, I guess you could say these, tr these triangular shapes and it looks like a hot mess. I know. And when I first started doing this, I was like, what am I doing? This looks totally ridiculous. But you'll see as we get more into this and start saturating the paper and adding more color, how cool it actually is going to look in the end. So I'm just taking more of that mowed lawn and I'm just starting on one side, squiggling my way down, making these kind of see how there's like these little triangles, triangles, making these triangular shapes and just pulling my sponge, dragging it along into those colors and I'm going to give it a second and I'm going to move on to the next color which is Lucky Clover. Same thing just inking it up and I'm just going to add some on now it looks like okay Nance you're not really adding any color there you're right it's really hard to see it's really subtle but I can tell you that those colors are being added so see if I do this on the side here and I kind of put like these streakiness and I'm really going to focus on the corners and the middle of darkening this up. Now you see the streaks there and if you don't like them you're like eh. You go back with your lightest color and you just kind of can blend them out of there and move them out of the way. It kind of like camouflages it a little bit. But I do like the streaks and I'll show you why in a moment. So I'm just going in and adding more color and I know you guys probably can't see but I can start to see the color adding, like I can see the first color, my second color, and now my third color starting to build up and add here. And I always want the, the darkest on the corners and in the center here. And still kind of just making that squiggly motion. 
I don't know what the official term for that is. And I do kind of want these lines here. And then I will just take my, my, my lightest color and smooth that out a little bit. I still want them there, but I want them there like as a shadow in the background. I don't want them to be very prominent. And now I'm going to go in with my darkest, which is uh, Chip Sapphire. It's not even a green. It's a very dark, dark blue like a navy. And again, focusing on the outer side, going into the middle. And it really is very freeing, like a kid finger painting. And all we're doing is layering colors here. Now you can say, well, why wouldn't we just go in with the blue and start with the blue because the whole point of this is to layer the colors these inks are transparent and you can see the different colors of the inks as you're adding them you can see them kind of building on top of each other and you just keep going back in go a little more into that lighter area each time as I'm building but I want to leave a little bit of that light stuff in the middle there. I don't want to completely cover that up. And again, focusing my darkest colors in the center. I mean, yeah, well, my lightest colors in the center of my lighter triangles and my darkest colors in the center of my dark triangles. And as the colors get into the core of that paper, they get deeper, they get darker. You can see them building up. You can see them turning green. All right, I'm gonna turn the light back on. Let me try, hold on this other light. I know that overhead light has a glare. How's that? Is that a little better without the glare? Let me show you guys where I'm at. And we're just going to add a little bit more of this dark blue. And then we'll start to put this card together. Hi, Sarah. Is the lighting any better now? All right, so I'm going to turn the overhead light on. And you guys tell me if it's better or not better. Okay, I'll leave the light on then. I'm going to turn this. I have like four lights on trying to get <laughs> the lights right in here. I'm going to pull the ink pads down so there's le hopefully less blurring, less uh, shadows for you guys. All right, so I think this is pretty good for this one. It almost takes on kind of this marbled look because you have these streaks of colors underneath your layers of colors um, as you're layering them up. So we have, you know, this area is dark and then this lighter. I do want to darken it up a little more. I feel like I need to add some more blue. I might even, might go get the black pad and put some black in here. I really feel like I need to darken this up a little bit more. And as these inks get down in there and start to saturate the color, they really take on their own life as you're layering them. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much done. This is the part I had a little difficulty on. So hopefully we'll be able to work through it here with you guys. So when I stamped this image yesterday, 
I used um, the Versifying Claire ink, which is very, very black. It's, um, Sarah, it's photo paper or glossy paper, not photo paper. It's glossy paper, not photo paper. Okay. Um, so I use this ink, but what happens is, you know, this is kind of a pigment ink. And even though it's super black, it really wasn't drying. The glossy, um, nature of the paper was kind of resisting it. So then I went and heat embossed it, which was okay. But then there was heat embossing flakes everywhere, right? So I went and I got out the trusty old archival ink. And this is also kind of like a pigment ink. I don't know if it says it on here. I don't know, but the ink sat on top. It did eventually dry, but it sat on top. So today I went and bought this color box ink. It says it's archival dye ink. We're going to try it. If it doesn't work, we're going to break out the stays on ink. So I've got, I've got every angle covered here. So we'll try this. And if it doesn't work, we'll stamp something else out. Now, I already have my stamp cleaned and lined up where I want it to go. I just need to move my paper over. Okay. And we're going to put our magnet at the top. And because the nature of this when you stamp it is for the images to come up with the stamp, I've tried to put extra magnets on here to hopefully hold it down so that it doesn't do that. You know, kind of wiggle it around. I put little washi tapes on my magnets so they don't pinch my fingers. All right, so... I'm almost thinking maybe I should just go with the stays on ink. All that work. I'm just going to go with the stays on ink. <laughs> I know once that stays on gets on there, it ain't coming up. It is not going to move. And the reason I'm using the Misty is because this is such a dark silhouette image. I, if I have to restamp it, I don't want anything being moved. Exactly, Sarah. Yes. That's why we're just going to snap straight down. No wiggling. Straight down. And I do want to kind of give it a second. Again, because of that um, glossy surface of the paper, we want to give that ink a second to get down into that paper. And this stamp normally takes me two or three stamps to get it all fully covered because it is such a large silhouette of an image. All right, it, the ink is still sitting on top. Can you guys see that, how wet it is? This was the exact same problem I was having yesterday. Ooh, there's a hair in there. Ah! I don't know if that came off the ink pad. It's a buzz. It's like, it came right off the ink pad. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. I think what I might do is hit it with the heat tool and cover up my ink quick. I'm just going to hit it with the heat tool real quick to try to get this ink down in there. Real lightly, I'm going to hold it up really high. Now I think we can go in with a second inking. Cross your fingers. All right, this time I'm just going to go real light with the ink. Like I'm not going to go heavy handed, just a real light tap. Kind of fill in those empty spaces. There's already a lot of ink still left on there. So I'm just, just lightly touching it up. Straight down. Press, press, press. 
And this is normally why, why would I get a free meal, Janie? Um, this is normally why I um, heat emboss, because when you have a silhouette image like this, Janie's saying, too bad you aren't at Applebee's, you could get a free meal. Oh, <laughs> I get it because of the hair. I think it was a piece of fuzz off my ink pad. Um, I usually like to do the heat embossing here because anything that wasn't filled in, the heat embossing pretty much fills in it. All right, that is looking much better. And since my paper moved, I'm going to pull this out and not mess with it because I feel like if I stamp it one more time, I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to heat this real quick and you want to do real quick swipes from high up with this because we don't want to curl this paper. That's not completely dry, but I wanted to show you guys the image. So I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There is still some missed spots on the bottom here in the stag. But overall, I don't think it's too bad. I think this would make a really cool masculine card. And I think it looks like northern lights in the background. What do you guys think? So the other way I wanted to try this, if you guys want to bear with me, is I want to try stamping the image first. What if we stamped it? Because I'm wondering if the ink is not saturating the paper because if you saturate it too much, the ink doesn't have anywhere to go. So I was like, what if I stamped it first and then did it? This is not a Stampscapes one, but the idea came to me from Stampscapes. This is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. It's called the Silhouette Stag, and it's from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. And it's one stamp. So all we did was just laid some ink down. Now, if you do not have glossy paper, the other thing you can try with this, and I think you'll have a lot of success with it. In fact, if you guys will bear with me one second, I'm going to grab a piece of Bristol Smooth. Hold on one second. All right, I got my crystal smooth. I'm just going to cut a chunk of it off here. What size did we say? Five and a quarter by four, right? By the way, Michael's had a sale. Buy one, get one half off on Bristol and Canton and all that stuff. Hi, Tracy. Oh, Tracy, I'm going to go watch it after I'm done here. Tracy, you're just in time because I'm going to try this again. But instead of using glossy card, I'm going to use um, Bristol Smooth because I think we can get the same results with Bristol Smooth. I'm not going to stamp it out. So let's try this again and see what we get on Bristol Smooth. I do apologize for the glare from my overhead light. Okay, so I'm using four Distress Inks again. I'm using Twisted Citron, Mowed Lawn, Lucky Clover, and Chipped Sapphire. And I'm using these little color box stylus sponges, which I've had in my stash for, I don't know, 10, 15 years and never, ever used them until I saw the Stampscapes videos. And they each have a sponge on each end. So you have four colors on two styluses here. And I'm going to start with the Twisted Citron. Twisted Citron. And if you have distress blending tools, I believe the same thing. Oh, let me show you guys. So I was showing earlier in the video these little brushes. I picked these up at five below. They're makeup brushes. So five dollars. So I want to show you guys the difference because people are like, are they worth it? Is it is it? So um just to show you guys, they just go on really smooth. It's just like like airbrushing. That's the only way I can describe it. 
Like there's no streaks or lines from the brush. Now I can see why ladies use this for their makeup. Yet I did not buy them for makeup. No. My stamps are more important to me than my face. <laughs> Tracy, I saw your son trying to help you out with your live and it reminded me of my son. Your son is way more patient than my son. My son's 12 years old and he's like, mom, you're interrupting my Fortnite. Can you get off the internet? <laughs> all right, so we just laid down that twisted citron all over. And now we're gonna go into the next color green, which is mowed lawn. And we're gonna build our little triangles up. So we're going to start over here in the corner. And Bristol Smooth is also very forgiving paper. That's why I like using it with distress inks. And I'm in my mind building my little triangles here. This is how I'm looking at it. I think it might be a little easier on the Bristol Smooth because you can really see where your ink's going in a, a much shorter period of time here. Oops. All right, what are you saying there, Trace? Let me see here. That's what I did on my video tonight. Can people subscribe to my YouTube and watch me use them to blend? Yes, they can. You guys need to go check out Tracy's channel. She's just starting out and doing a fabulous job. Tracy, you have way more patience than I do, and you explain things so nicely. Like, I just want to hang out with you because you're so nice. These are... These are, you can look these up. They're called color blocks. I think they're called stylus. And these little sponges, they come in a pack of three. They're called the stylus blender foams. Now, don't confuse them with the black ones. These black ones are designed to be imprinted on. Like you take a heat tool and impress something and they become little foamy stamps. So the black ones are not the same as the white ones. The white ones are blending sponges. But if you have the Tim Holtz Distress blending tools, it's the same thing. This just coming on a stick. So I, I, I always encourage you guys to use what you have. You don't have to go out there and buy anything fancy. I'm sure that you have Distress blending uh, foams you can use. That'll work just as good. Makeup sponges even. All right, we're going to go into the next color green here, which is Lucky Clover. Where's that glare? Cover that glare. And all, all I would do is just kind of, as I'm going in, I'm darkening. The darker the color, I'm just doing less of an area. So I'm just doing like the outer edges and the middle in the darker, the darker colors now. And then I might want to add a couple squiggles in here really lightly. And as you add each layer of color, the color before, you can really see it shine through as the darker color gets put over top of it. And then the last one will be Chipped Sapphire, which is a dark, dark, a navy blue. I'm trying to look through the camera guys here so I can cover up that little glare spot for you. I know it's got to be super annoying. I'm sorry. Or you can turn it off. What do you see here? Tracy, do we search? Uh, yeah, if you just go on Tracy Schultz, T-R-A-C-Y-S-H-U-L-T-Z, that's Tracy's channel. Hi, Marissa. Sarah, you have a channel too, right? I think I've seen some things by Sarah. Just cards by Sarah. Now for this navy, I'm just kind of going in and touching up the edges. I don't want a whole bunch of the navy in there. We want this card to be um, primarily green with 
touches of blue. So see here where I got like way too much blue in the middle there. I'm going to take my green sponge and blend that out so I can pull that blue out of there and not make it look so harsh. That's what's nice about using Bristol paper and using the glossy paper is it hides mistakes. So people are like, oh, I, I'm not very good at blending. I don't have the patience for it. A lot of it is the tools you're using. A sponge usually works best and the paper you're using. And I'm telling you guys, Bristol smooth paper makes a difference when you're doing this background blending. And I think I want a little more twisted citron, a little more of that brighter green in there. There we go. All right, so I am actually going to flip this one this way. Because the other one, this one I did with more darker at the top and lighter coming down. I think this one I'm going to have the darker at the bottom and the lighter at the top here. Okay. So the problem we were having, I, I think I'm pretty much done with my background here. The problem I was having with the glossy card is that when I stamp the black ink, the black ink is sitting on top. And actually this, this is still a little sticky. Um, the black ink wasn't soaking into the paper. It's sitting on top, which is giving me a very splotchy image. Can you guys see that? See, well, it would be great if I stamped them in brown because then it would look like fur. But it's, it looks like a diseased elk. <laughs> so I went to the Bristol because I want to try to be able to stamp it out and have that image be solid as it's meant to be. So we're going to put this guy down here. Be careful with your magnets. They are mean, pinchy magnets if you're not careful. I did not clean my stamp off from the last time I used it and it has stays on all over it. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm going to try this Color Box Archival ink. I just bought this. I don't know how it's going to work. Ew, it's kind of a spongy pad. Ugh, I do not like this ink pad. It's super thin. Like, it's tiny. Like, look at It's super thin. So, I just got my fingers stuck on the stamp. Stuck my fingers in it. This, Leah, you can have this one. Ew. All right. I don't like the stamp pad. Yuck. There's still hair. This is a hairy elk. There are little felt pieces all over my stamped image here. Uh, okay. OCD kicking in. Not having it. This is why I could never be like a professional because you guys would like be having like videos all edited. Oh, Tracy, I know I was on late Thursday and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get to bed. I have work tomorrow. <laughs> all right. And I am just using the, um, it's a stamp cleaner, ultra clean stamp cleaner. And I just have it in one of these little, these little bottles here, squirt bottles. Bruce Moreau also sells these. I also got these out of my makeup stash. And I just use a microfiber towel to get in all the nitty gritty here. And we just dry it off a little bit. Yes, Tracy, it is a blue night rubber stamp. <laughs> Diseased hairy elk. That's right, Sarah. Yesterday, I was when I was making the original cards, and I couldn't decide which ink to use. You know, I was kind of down here bored by myself. Leah was down here kind of waiting for me to hurry up, and I was having a conversation with myself in voices of different ink pads. And Stays on Ink was not very happy that it has not come out of the closet in 10 years and was like, please come use me. And I was having this conversation between Stays on and Archival Ink. And it, I was quite entertained, but I'm sure my daughter thought I was going mad talking to myself and 
ink pads. All right, I've cleaned all the ink off of there. I'm going to give this ink pad to Leah because that tiny little ink pad there, I mean, I guess if you were going stamp to pad, but direct to stamp, my fingers got all in the ink. So here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go back to, let's just use regular archival. This is, this is old. Look how old this is. Is there a date on here? No, but it's super old. Trusty old archival. And I will not get my fingers all inky either. And I will not make my elk hairy. Stag, whatever. needs to be re-inked. That's okay. Let's try this. If you ever get to a stamp show and Blue Night Rubber Stamps is there, Lynn, the owner, she's from Maryland. She normally has like these specials where it's like buy four, get one free or something like that. And that's what I take advantage of. Because you always, like, say, yeah, maybe, like, I see three that I like, maybe four. So when you see that special, it's nice because you get everything that you want without having to be like, eh. All right. I need to clearly re-ink this pad, which I'm not going to do right now. I'm going back in with archival. Did you hear that, archival? Yes, yes, my turn. See, archival's happy. I mean, stays on. Archival needs to be re-inked. Stays on. This is your shot. Don't blow it or you're going back in the closet. Oh, what a huge difference. Tremendous. Stays on, saves the day. I am going to do one more pass with the stays on, just a little bit on the bottom here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited right now. This is so pretty. Do you guys get like all happy and giddy like that when you make something and it comes out really cool and you're like, <gasps> at this piece of art I've made and now I don't want to give it away to someone. Ugh. One more tiny spot right here. Finally, full coverage ink. Janie, make me laugh. Thank you. Okay, guys. I think Bristol wins the day when it comes to this technique. Okay, so here is the original made with glossy paper. It looks cool. The Northern Lights do look pretty cool on the glossy. I will say that. They just kind of blend like it's seamless. The black ink, not so much. We got to work on the black ink on glossy paper. Here is the Bristol. The Northern Lights still look cool. They're just not as cool as they were on the glossy paper. But that stag, whoa, he steals the show. And then what I normally do is I mount these on black cards. So there is a little bit of a mat around. Like that. Very cool uh, masculine stamp. But I just like that northern lights technique. So there you go, guys. It really wasn't that hard. But I think Bristol paper, if you have that, came out a little easier than doing it on the glossy. I like them both. But I think if I were to do it again on the glossy, I would do like I did yesterday and um, heat emboss it to cover it up. 
Heat embossing covers everything. It hides our mistakes. So there we go, guys. Glossy paper, Bristol. You guys tell me which one you like better. Would you be more concerned about the background or the actual stamped image? It's hard for you guys to see, too, because you can't see through the camera. Like, it's a little more, I don't know the word, like, I guess grainier looking on the Bristol for the background. And on the, on the glossy, it's definitely more smooth, like high definition TV. It's just so smooth. It's almost like we used a piece of pattern paper. Okay, guys, that's all I have for tonight. I hope you enjoyed my Northern Lights tutorial. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, you can scroll up and give it a thumbs up so I know that you guys like these kinds of tutorials. And if you want to check out some other great YouTubers that are uh, making some fun videos, you can go to Just Cards by Sarah. And you can also check out Tracy Schultz, T-R-A-C-Y-S-H-U-L-T-Z over on YouTube. And I will also link um, Stampscapes, their link, because they're the ones that inspired me with this. And I really am excited to play with their stamps and, and some more of these background techniques with this. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, yeah. keep on stamping. Good night, guys. Janie says, elk with measles. That's right, Janie. Bye-bye. <laughs>